Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. And we are continuing our series of daily morning meditations, looking at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning and evening prayer, what we know as the daily office lectionary. Now, this past week, as I've been at a conference, we took a little deviation and we did look at a couple of saints' days. We looked at St. Bonaventure uh, and we also looked at St. Swithin, uh, both a wonderful, important saints as well as fun saints for us to get to know. But yesterday we got back on track and we looked at the lesson appointed for St. Luke's Gospel. Uh, and we will continue in St. Luke's Gospel for the next couple of days uh, until we do finish it. But I thought for this daily morning meditation, I would look at what is uh, assigned for Saturday morning and then picks up again on Monday. And that is from the Old Testament from the book of Samuel. Now, if you have a Bible that is uh, more Roman Catholic oriented, uh, you may find that the first book of Samuel, uh, the prophet, is actually known as the first book of Kings. There are two books of Samuel and then the book of 1 Kings and 2 Kings. Uh, but in the Roman Catholic Bibles, you would have 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 3 Kings, and 4 Kings. So please don't get them confused. You open it up and you say, what the heck is Father Kelly talking about? I can't find the first book of Samuel. Uh, it means you have an old older Roman Catholic translation of the Bible, and that's okay. Uh, you're actually probably holding what's known as a Douay Rheims uh, translation of Scripture, uh, which would be pretty familiar to you if you also know the King James translation of Scripture. The, the wording of it, the older English, is really quite comparable. Samuel's an interesting book for us to look at, and we're going to spend a long time looking at 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel because we are now getting into some of the meat of the history of the people of Israel with God and how it is that they are working out this covenant that has been given to them through Abraham. Uh, with Samuel, we will have the introduction of going from judges who are ruling Israel uh, to the coming of a king, uh, King Saul, and then eventually King David and all of the messiness that comes uh, after King David. If you don't know those stories, boy, you're in for a good one uh, as we get both through the book of Samuel and then get further into the book of Kings. Uh, so I, I do highly commend to you like I do for all the readings for morning and evening prayer, that you do read along uh, and follow the lectionary uh, so that you can go ahead and comprehend uh, what it is that's God's plan for salvation. Reading the book of Samuel lays this great foundation uh, for what will eventually be the promise of the sending of a Savior, a Messiah, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Today's lesson, however, is really kind of the introduction. It's the very beginning of the first book of Samuel, and we have introduced to us a couple of very interesting characters. Uh, we have introduced to us Elkanah uh, and, ha and Hannah, his wife. Uh, he also has a second wife, which was un not uncommon in the Old Testament. It was not God's plan for uh, salvation, not a glad the way God created us, but there were seemingly some deviations in the Old Testament of multiple wives. But uh, in this particular case, Hannah was the wife that Elkanah def de uh, definitely and deeply loved, uh, but she was unable to have children. And you'll see throughout the scriptures that there are frequently people who pop up in this story uh, who are not able to have children early on who God uh, blesses with children. We think, of course, of Abraham and his wife. Uh, we think of Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, being beyond childbearing years as well. Uh, but in this particular story, uh, we start off with Hannah who is gone on to the Jerusalem with her husband, and she is weeping at the posts of the temple, asking God for the favor of being able to have a child. And she makes a promise and a dedication that if, in fact, God gives her a child, if, she, if he gives her a son, she will dedicate him to the service of the Lord. Uh, then we meet another character in the story, and that is Eli. He is the priest, the great high priest serving in the temple, and he sees Hannah praying. She, her lips are moving, but she's not verbally out loud praying, uh, and he actually accuses her of being drunk. Uh, so um, interesting, because we also hear that people accuse the disciples of being drunk when they were speaking in tongues. Um, but Hannah is able to pour out her heart uh, to Eli and explain to him exactly what it is that she is praying about. And Eli predicts to her that in fact, God will grant her a son. 
Uh, and, and we do know that that will come true. And later on, we'll get to the prayer of Hannah, which will sound very much like the Magnificat, the prayer of Mary, uh, which we heard about earlier, a couple weeks ago, when we were studying the beginning of St. Luke's Gospel. Uh, now, of course, we do know, you're always allowed to read forward and read ahead in the story, uh, but we do know that Hannah does, in fact, conceive a child with her husband, and that child is Samuel. So anyway, it's, a, it's an exciting book. It's full of all, chock full of all sorts of great stories. Uh, and uh, so I do hope that as you are uh, spending time in your scriptures, you're taking the opportunity to use our daily office lectionary to follow along with us, uh, whether it be the readings for uh, morning prayer from Samuel or from the gospel or one of the epistles uh, that we are reading an evening prayer. Uh, I do hope that you are reading your scriptures, coming to know what it is that God has done for the people of Israel, uh, what he has done for the early church, and most importantly, the promises of what he is doing right now through the power of the Holy Spirit uh, for us, the people of God, for his church. Uh, last day today of my retreat, uh, my conference, and uh, God willing, I hope to see so many of you tomorrow in church at St. John's. Uh, but until then, I hope you have a glorious Saturday. God bless you.